Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Brandon. Welcome to Audio Addiction, where you can find these album reviews. You can find our band interviews, and you can find live coverage of the concerts that we get. I posted an album review of Duelist. Be here now. Go check it out, especially if you're a fan of old Elitist. They have members um, of Elitist in this new band, so definitely go check that out. Also, I'll be posting an interview with Awaken I Am uh, from Australia uh, at 8 p.m., so it'll be going on after this in this album review. So if you happen to be clicking on this video, uh, go check out that album review when it comes out as well. And if you enjoyed any of that content, please subscribe, please hit that thumbs up, and please hit that notification bell so you get notified of when anything audio addiction related comes out. So tonight, we're going to be talking about Grey Haven's new record, Empty Black. So I haven't heard too much about this band. I know that they signed with Equal Vision, one of my favorite record labels, and I had to give this band a listen because I know that Equal Vision always has something cool coming out. So I listened to Echo and Dust Part 1 and 10 Dogs Red Heaven, and I was immediately hooked with this band. Uh, they just have this unique sound that is unlike a lot of bands out in the scene currently, and so I wanted to do an album review of this album because I feel like this band needs to get bigger. Uh, they're currently on tour with Norma Jean, Gideon, and Tooth Grinder, but I definitely want to give this this band a big, hopefully, boost in terms of, um, you know, new fans, and I hope that you guys definitely go check it out if you get the chance to. So I'm going to go through each track, give you my thoughts and opinions on all of them, some pros and cons on the record, and then I'm going to finish it out with an overall rating. So the first track is called Sweet Machine. Uh, it has this creepy like eerie ominous sort of intro and then just kind of just immediately just hits you just punches you i don't know how they do it, it just kind of sets you back in your in your places as soon as i listened to this first track i was just like you know what the hell's going on here so really enjoyed that it has this really strong every time i die influence especially um in a lot of these songs i feel like every time i die is a, a band that i will reference frequently but um they kind of had that sort of sound to him, very chaotic, spastic, great stuff. Um, the singing on this track is awesome, and the singing throughout this record is great as well, too. And the screaming matches that same sort of feeling, kind of just just kind of hits you in his soul and they do some he does some really interesting stuff vocally, both in the clean department and in the scream department. Really awesome stuff in this track in particular, too. Uh, the instrumentals are nuts. They have this chaotic um feel to it and they definitely bring the energy to the track the bridge has this interesting sort of grunge rock sort of feel to it um and it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of like the newest my ticket home records uh the past two uh strangers only and i forget the newest one but definitely has that sort of vibe to it and i like that the songs kind of contain different genres as you'll hear throughout the entire record um there are some stuff that they kind of cover that i was really surprised about but just kind of work well in the track uh so great opener track if if you weren't already on this train already then you got to get on with this track so we're gonna move into track number two which is blemish uh the instrumentals remind me of a heavier version of artifacts pareo another favorite band of mine probably top tier favorite bands for me um but it definitely had that sort of vibe to it especially in terms of the um the guitar riff it felt very much like um a probably one of the older like time and place sort of guitar riff it definitely felt like that but nonetheless really good stuff every time i die sort of vocal patterns in this track and i just love how everything's super rhythmic um it has this great transitions between like spastic and melodic um and they just keep that same sort of interesting rhythmic pattern and it kind of changes as as the song progresses and kind of shifts and molds and changes and i love that the drumming in this track is actually insane just kind of switching between the different rhythm patterns like i've been mentioning earlier um is just impressive and the way that he's able to kind of do those sort of like fast almost like blast beat parts and then just kind of like completely switch it up is really unique really in interesting um and it was definitely something that caught my ear the ending has this sort of southern ish vibe to it uh, very much in the vein of like Maylene's and Sons of Disaster, that sort of vibe to it, and I really enjoyed this track as well. So we're going to move into track number three, which is Echo and Dust Part 1. This was 
the first single that they released and I like that this one has more of a spatial awareness to it and what I mean by that is that it doesn't have a lot going on and that you know the first two tracks feel very just kind of like in your face like oh holy shit like what's going on and this one kind of takes it back a little bit i mean it's still aggressive it's still heavy it's still kind of chaotic but it's not as just kind of like in your face it's a little bit more reserved and i appreciate that um and there's just more of a defined groove in this track uh the intro starts off soft with some tender kind of thoughtful vocal patterns and then it kind of builds as the song goes on which is really awesome the guitar parts on this track are really cool they're really unique and they kind of blend and pair well with the drums they kind of match each other in terms of just interesting you know like fills or just interesting rhythm parts or something like that it just works and they just work in tandem very well um the bass also holds up that end of the bargain too i think that they all work together in really a good cohesive manner um and there's this awesome gnarly breakdown at three minutes and 22 seconds to the four minutes and five second mark absolutely brutal love this track so much and i'm i'm definitely glad uh that this one was on here for sure So we're going to move into track number four, four uh, is Mortality Rate, and this one has more of a unique vocal pattern to it, and I think it's probably one of the more unique tracks off this kind of first, I guess, quarter of the record. Um, has almost this spoken word kind of rap feel to it, it has a real interesting rhythm to it. I, I don't know how to explain it other than that. And maybe you'll have to go and listen to it and understand what I mean by that. Um, but it's really kind of interesting. And a lot of vocalists don't particularly do this. So um, at least to my knowledge. So I think that that's really unique and keeps them, you know, definitely special and separated from a lot of other bands. Um, there's this really awesome, unique kind of rhythm, rhythmic breakdown at the 1 minutes and 11 second mark to the 1 minutes and 20 sec 22 second mark. I think it's really awesome. And I like that the... Um, the singing and screaming uh, in the second verse, they just kind of pair very well together as well. Um, and I think they're layered appropriately too. Um, I say that the song and just vocal delivery feels kind of like a black sheep of the record. Um, and then the ending of this track is just absolutely sick. It's super heavy, brutal, and I, I definitely love this one as well. So we're going to move into track number five, which is 10 Dogs, Red Heaven. Uh, like I said, this was the second single that they had released, and this has a really unique catchiness to it. I didn't think that this song was going to be as catchy as I thought it was, and then every time I get to the song on this record, I'm like, damn, this is so good. Um, loving the instrumentals. They kind of strike a great balance between heavy and melodic um, and they just work so well. There's this interesting guitar solo at the minute and 55 second mark to the two minutes and 10 second mark as well. And just the contrast in this track is cool and how they transition uh, between the two is just flawless. Um, and just that last minute, I, I keep saying that it hits like a truck, but like, honestly, this track in particular is just super heavy, just brutal. It just makes you want to just like punch something. Um, and it's so vindicating and so great um i'm so glad that they released this track as well um but they have some really awesome bangers that haven't been released yet on this record and i'm excited to get into those as well um but this one absolutely superb track so we're gonna move into track number six which is white lighters um and this one just offers a nice lull to the album and um and shows off more of the band's kind of like underlying skills as opposed to just being like chaotic and just having some really interesting guitar parts. This one is a little bit more reserved and I like that. After having literally five songs just like in your face, like brutality, um, it was a nice kind of like breath, breath of fresh air, kind of like a palate cleanser as, as you would say. Um, and it just kind of shows off more of the skills of the vocalist, especially his cleans and just his reins. And it highlights his abilities and the way he's kind of able to like kind of float around and make this track really interesting. I think that it comes 
at a really great time in the record and you know as much as i didn't love it around the first time because i was just like man they just need to continue that like energy level at like 11 for like the entirety of the record but um after listening to it multiple times i think that it's a great spot to be in and you know i feel like it's one that i listen a lot into a lot more each time that i go through the album just because it's a nice break it's a nice change of pace and i think it works well uh where it's at so we're gonna move into track number seven which is kappa river child um this one has this cool sort of dark tonality to it the instrumentals definitely add to that feeling uh, whether it be the drums guitars or vocals um they definitely play a lot into that uneasy factor um of this song um but when it gets to the chorus it transitions into this interesting sort of grunge rock sort of feel um much like almost i think blemish was the other track that kind of has that grunge rock feel to it um which is interesting and it's a nice you know curveball uh in the track um and it's just really impressive again how they switch between the different genres i know i've been mentioning it a lot but um once you listen to the record you'll, you'll have that same sort of sentiment at least i believe so um and it just it's just so interesting how they're able to combine so many different kind of genres into one track it's just mind-blowing and i love it uh i also like that it kind of bleeds into the next track the day day is gone um just so smoothly so like it's just so flush it works so well and i'm excited to get into that track so we're going to move into track number eight which is day is gone like i mentioned the first part of the track feels kind of like a continuation of kappa like i mentioned um and then when it gets to the course it gets really weird but in a good way it like completely just kind of shifts in a 180 direction they almost has this sort of major like happy sort of feeling to it and it kind of is a nice kind of counterbalance in the whole song because it feels like a night versus day track like you know the sort of darker heavier parts feel like the night and the day sort of parts feel like the choruses where it's light you know more melodic more happy and just more interesting uh i think that the contrast between the two is just interesting unique and it's something that i haven't heard in a while as well um there's this really cool breakdown at the two minutes and 47 second mark to the two minutes and 57 se 57 second mark say that three times fast and just that ending is freaking gnarly so good comes out of nowhere but it is so good and i love it probably one of my favorite breakdowns off the entire record it just kind of comes out of the blue and just with the sort of the changes in the song i think it just is a nice kind of just like put the stamp of approval on this track so we're gonna move into track number nine which is broadcast network and holy poop this intro is sick let me just say that and this track is just absolutely hog wild um talk about experimentation this one is just taking it to that next level i just feel like they don't want anybody else to put out a record as good as they do because this one is really on another level the energy just has this incredible just infectiousness to it um and just is heavy it just oh man it's just so good um easily the most chaotic songs that i've heard in a hot minute for sure definitely bringing out vibes of like let live the chariot um those sorts of bands every time i die limbs more recently um just like super intense super great stuff and it also gives me sorts of vibes of the ongoing concept another really great kind of chaotic band as well um if they ever did a tour together i would be like throw mo throw money at the screen like i just be like that needs to hit my area so um uh, definitely love this track a lot if i wasn't if you ha couldn't tell i love this one so much and we're going to move on to the last track, track number 10, which is Echo and Dust Part 2. Um, this one takes more of a liking to the melodic and ambient side of what they do. Um, and it's just highlighted by great cleans at the beginning of the track. And I just like how the heavier parts kind of cut in and to the latter half of the beginning part of the track. It just kind of transitions very well. And there is a drop at the minute and 45 second mark that you won't be ready for it like your body is not ready for this drop it is so unexpected and every time i get to this track i'm like am i gonna am i gonna poop myself because it's so good um it really has elements from the entire record 
you know, they have some really more melodic moments to play off, like, White Lights and maybe, like, Day is Gone and kind of maybe, like, you know, more of the melodic sensibility in, like, Blemish or, like, Echo and Dust Part 1, um, which is really nice. And then the other kind of half is more or less, like, the heavier parts, like, Broadcast Network, uh, Kappa, uh probably uh brought i said broadcast network 10 dogs things of that nature i feel like it plays off a lot of that um and just for being a fi almost five and a half minute song i feel like it keeps your attention through the entire thing and every time i get to a track like this i'm like you know five minutes is a long time and you know keeping somebody's attention for that long is quite an accomplishment so i definitely like that so much and you know they had to hit you with that hard ending like that just like you know, if you weren't already dead already, they're putting you in that coffin and they are sending you out to the eternity. Like, it's insane. Finishes off in just such a fantastic way. And I can't praise this album enough. Like, I, I haven't been this stoked on a heavy record in probably quite a while. And um, it's just insane. Like, if you have not checked out this band, don't be like me and sleeping on this band. Please go check them out. Um pros and cons just pros really inventful very experimental um very unique like unlike like i said unlike any band that i've heard in quite a while um really awesome stuff if you get a chance to go see them on the norma Jean tour please go see them um go support these guys they i think if there's any band that i'd love to get behind in 2018 it is definitely this one um super fantastic record um, really have nothing bad to say about it. It's just all over the place and it really takes you for a wild ride being 10 tracks. You'll be like, you'll be blown back by the 10th track. So, uh, my overall rating for gray Haven's empty black, I'm giving it a 9.8 out of 10, my highest rated anything. I don't think I've rated anything higher than 9.8, but this is practically flawless in terms of records. Um, I haven't heard, like I said, I haven't heard a record that's captivated me as much as this one. I'm so excited to hopefully see them in the foreseeable future. I might even just go see them on this tour coming up. Um, super great record. Please, 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 please go pick this up. Um, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on this record. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, definitely album of the year contender for sure. And if this, this is going to be the record to beat for this year so far. Uh, and I'm just saying this and I'm just putting it out there. Other bands that are going to be releasing records. I'm looking at you like fit for King silent planet, um, like Pacific, like even bands not in this genre, this is going to be the album to beat. Don Broco's really close. And, um, there's definitely another record that I can't remember that is also very close as well uh and i picked it up too i shit i can't remember it but again this is the record to be go check this one out please go do so really awesome band really unique um sound and i absolutely loved it so if you enjoyed this review please subscribe please hit that thumbs up it really does go a long way thank you guys for the immense support on this channel it really does mean the absolute world to me i know i say it in every video but I mean it 110%. So thank you guys for watching this review. My name is Brandon. We hope you got your fix and we'll be talking with you soon. Peace. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching. Of course, uh, if you enjoy what we do, make sure to go check out the other series we do. We do album reviews, we do band interviews, and we do live videos. So definitely go check that out. Um, hit that subscribe button. It really helps our channel, helps us grow. Make sure to hit that like button as well. Uh, go follow us on social media. That's all down below. We try to keep that as updated as possible. We also made a new website where we'll be posting photos of upcoming concerts and stuff like that, which you can go check out at audioaddictionmedia.com and come get your fix with us, guys. Talk to you later. Deuces.